Okay. If we're going to do a starter guide about Georgia, what would be on that list? Okay, so I've got a couple of things that would be on that list. Um, maybe the first one would be Blue by Joni Mitchell, which might be on Taylor's list as well. So yeah, I'm in Canada and I'm repping Joni, Thank you. which feels good. Um, yeah, I mean this is obvious why it's such a good, it's so totally confessional and um, personal and I just love the way that she writes and the instrumentation, everything about it and I know it back to front and it's an album that I go to when I'm feeling sad and I can go even sadder listening to it um, which is always a nice, you know, like to indulge in it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just really timeless, the writing, and the, you, even though it was written in it's like 71, um, if someone wrote those lyrics now, it would still, it would feel fresh, I think. So that's my number one on my cool. Celtic pack. <laughs> so number one for me would be Stevie Wonder's discography. Nice. Um, nice. That's, yeah. yeah, that's just... Um, I was playing football for most of my life until I got shown this by my dad and um, he's the first person that I learned every song of his, like I know pretty much every song he's released um, and he was the first person I saw live and he he made me want to do everything like he did for many people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, 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 I, you know, it's similar to Joe Mitchell, you can go back to him now, it's just timeless. So, um, up until then I was playing the piano, I was playing lots of classical piano, but I wasn't interested in music, and then mm -hmm. that was the start of things. When did you yeah. see him live? So I'm in 2010. Whoa! In Hyde Park, yeah. And that, the live was great, it was um, Jamiroquai, Corey <laughs> uh, and Bailey Ray, James Morris, maybe, and him. So they were like all my favorite people. Yeah. That's a crazy lineup. Yeah, Hyde Park so, School too. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Good, yeah. Nice pick. The whole discography. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, there's albums. I think there's an album which is a discography. Yeah, yeah. So you can check that out. Nice. Oh, there's one specific. Yeah, I think I there's the Stevie Wonder collection on on Spotify. Least, okay. Which is like five hundred songs. Or something. Yeah, that's awesome. Hell yeah. Yes. All right. Awesome. Um, next for me is James Blake's self-titled first album which fits very nicely with Joni Mitchell, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just remember discovering this. I was still at home, I hadn't moved to London yet, and uh, every song was great, and uh, I would listen to it on repeat um, through on my CD player. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of where me and Taylor aligned when we, when we met each other, was like these sorts of references. That was one of the references mm -hmm. that we both really liked, and uh, yeah, Re really, really good album. There's also a Feist cover too on that, you know, Feist. From Canon. Yeah, she's she? from Canon. Yeah. Yeah. That was kind of weird. Hey. And I didn't know that, I knew the Blake, James Blake version first, mm. so. Her album's great, actually. Yeah, yeah she's really fucking like that. awesome. Yeah. yeah, underrated. That's Who's a this? Feist. Feist. Yeah. Is that the person who did the... Wrote she song. wrote a song on there called "It's Escaping Me," but uh, well, "Limit Your Love" is the yeah, song. Yeah, "Limit Your Love." Oh, okay. She wrote that. That's a, all right. Well, I can. Yeah, I mean, I can sort of align with that by mentioning two things. I also was in. I, I was also obsessed by James Blake, but mostly his remixes that he did. Um, that I don't think any of them are really released. They're all on YouTube. There's one by Mala that was released. Okay. And then there's a few synths that. Well, aren't really the ones I'm talking about there on Spotify, but um, he did these uh, like bootleg remixes of like uh, um, like Big Boy, nice, and all those sorts of people, mm -hmm. and um, I think that's his best music, and really? it made me like start to value remixing in a different way because it emotionally affected me more than lots of original music, um, right? So that. Yeah, that would be definitely connected over like the production of his music in the beginning. I think his early production is like probably some of the best stuff that exists. Um, but at the same time, I also got into like I was the the album that made me want to make music was um, this UKF dubstep like compilation. I don't mm -hmm. know if that was big over here. Like it was very English. Mm -hmm. What's it called? 
It's a well, it's a YouTube channel called UKF. Yeah. This was around oh. 2010. Yeah. And um, they did like, <coughs> like you know, Flux Pavilion. Mm -hmm. It was like those sort of artists, and they did compilations oh, each okay. year. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. like bringing back a memory yeah. hole of being in high school and yeah. diving yeah, down yeah, YouTube. Probably, yeah. yeah. Um, and Pavilion. that's yeah. So that made me want to make music. Flux Pavilion in particular was like. Whoa. Guy. Yeah. Deep cut. And we actually met him recently, we did a Zoom with him, um, <laughs> so it was quite funny. How was that? Yeah, it was great. It was with him and Mala, yeah. um, who were like, yeah, the two, the genius, you know, dubstep. Yeah, yeah. Geniuses. Yeah. Um, UK heroes. Yeah, so those things I was listening to at the same time, like electronic music wise, and it was like, made me very confused about what I wanted to make. Um, yeah. Sometimes I'd go from like making like something that could, I was kind of making like Tomorrowland sort mm -hmm. of star music. But then also, and at the same time, listened to Jane Mitchell, so um, it was quite. I remember talking to my parents, asking them which direction, when I was like 14. Yeah. Whether do I do that? Like, <laughs> should I go? Singer, songwriter, or. You yeah. Do both. Well, yeah, yeah, that's kind of did do both. Yeah. That's kind of wild. Well, yeah, that's what we ended up doing. Nice. Yeah, okay, so that. Now we're on equal, I wanted to, you know, I A, you got seven, now we're. That's a great cut too, Dan. Okay, uh, my next one um, is Cocteau Twins, Heaven on Las Vegas, nice. which is probably so many people's favourite albums. I actually came to this maybe like two years ago, I heard it for the first time. I hadn't heard it before. And um, yeah, it was. Uh, I don't really have, like, it doesn't happen often, does it, when you listen to an album for the first time and it makes you you're instantly like, oh, I connect with this so deeply. and. Mm -hmm. um, it's quite special. So that was kind of the yeah. In the last five years, that's been like that that, that that moment when I first listened to it has been. Oh yeah, I don't know how to describe it. But um, yeah, it's just even you can't even hear the lyrics, <laughs> which I figure out what they've been saying. No, and I don't need to either. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, I, I put a lot of work into my lyric writing, and I love good lyrics, but just somehow it like. It's the voice. Strangely, just isn't. Yeah. yeah, it's like you, it's in a different language or something. Um, the melodies and the harmony, and um, it, it's one sound, but they they got it, didn't they? I don't know. It's amazing. Yeah, and then and then I, and then I connected with, listened to Massive Attack like growing up loads, and I I didn't realise that she'd done like mezzanine and yeah, Smith Frazier, true. Um, which was like that made so much sense. The melodies are the really, teardrop melody. Perhaps? Yeah, yeah, they're just really iconic and very well crafted. Um, so that was like a big discovery. Yeah, big hero of mine. Nice. Any particular song off that album? Um, Cherry Coloured Funk. So yeah, that's the best song ever written. It's so silly. Yeah, I listened to that today. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just something about the um, the it's it's just like perfectly crafted. Um, mm -hmm down to like the inversions of like the chords, mm -hmm. the, the bass line and the melody is just amazing, yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. I like that. Um, for me, the, the next person that affected me was uh, John Cage. Uh, nice. That was like, I was, I, we both studied music and I'd been vaguely aware, you know, I knew who he was, but like, I just, I, uh, I just got really into him, and I, I s probably um, not very wisely just um, I couldn't be able, I couldn't make music for a while because I couldn't really figure out why I was doing it, and um, that was after becoming quite obsessed with him. So I had like six, no, not six months, like maybe four months where I just didn't really make anything. So I just I couldn't really get my head around the the. I wanted to just accept the sound of of real life, and mm -hmm. I felt that making music was just making me dislike normal sounds. So I couldn't bring myself to do it really. Yeah. So um, it had quite a big effect on me. It was probably like quite a teenage, you know, like angsty realization sort of thing. But I th I think he's great, and um, just going through all the downloads. And there's not really a piece. There's a piece that we studied. Um, called Imaginary Lands, which is a radio thing, and we did that at Guildhall, and, but yeah, to me it's not even really about his music, it was more, he merged the lines, mm -hmm. it's just very inspiring, that's what, for me it's like, 
a great thing to remind me like that, that sort of way of looking at music, which is like reinventing it and also then like want, not trying to reinvent inventing it and like nailing it sort of thing. So like, yeah, I think he just, he, um, clar he was very clarif he was he clarified it. He was very succinct. That's fascinating. Lots of his ideas aren't very new, but like the way he explained it. Yeah. That's pretty why it was so famous. Yeah. It's very well put. That's awesome. Yeah. It's um, Ravel's String Quartet. And oh yeah, and you Ravel. One. Um, Ravel and Debussy only wrote one, and four. Um, but this one, um, I was shown in like composition class when I was like um, fourteen, maybe, and I wrote and written a bit of um, string music or piano music, and I was like, why is it sounding so clunky? And the composition teacher was like, major sevenths, just at, like, and that was how I got introduced. And he showed me this piece of music. Um, uh, and I would say like just the first um, movement. I think it's in the like. Actually, I'm not sure what it is. Mm -hmm. But um, I go. This is my point. Like my biggest point of reference in all writing because it's like a classical pop song in a way. Like the harmony is just really addictive and interesting and um, really melodic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's kind of a reference point. I always come back to that first. Uh, movement of the string quartet, and okay. also, I love string quartets as well. I played, I played them growing up, and uh, it's a uh, it's a great uh, ensemble. Nice. You know, yeah. My last is um, my favourite person at the moment, which is Bob Dylan. Um, nice. I only got into him like four years ago, and um, I feel like over the time I've had favourite people that I now don't like. I don't really think that's going to happen with him. Um, and I just uh, just can't think of anyone better than him. I saw him a few weeks ago, um, and probably the album is like um, the most recent one that he did because mm -hmm. it was it was like I like being uh, aware of. It's nice to have them release something whilst you're like alive with them. Mm -hmm. Like all the other stuff, I was going back, which was like it's you know it's. You have to bring yourself to do that sometimes, but this yeah. I just listen to it straight away, and um, just like lyrically and the way he um, he functions, I think I can't see. It's actually quite uninspiring because it makes me think that <laughs> everything's uh, there's no point really. Um, but that's good to know that I'd rather <laughs> be aware of that than just having not heard of that. Yeah, his new album is crazy. Yeah. Blake Mills is on it too. If you like him. Really? Player. Yeah, I know who he is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you see, yeah, uh, yeah. Which you don't hear him wild. talk about new music much, so it's hard to know what he likes these days. Mm -hmm. um, the band was amazing when I saw them. It was like classic guys that have been with him for ages. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, that's that's it. Nice. Those are lovely picks, guys. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks Solid. for doing it. Yeah. No, no, no. We. Well, thank you for doing video. Okay. No worries. Yeah. yeah thank you. Clap.